Howdy, Banjo Ben here at BanjoBenClark.com with one of my best friends and favorite musicians, Mr. Tony Ray. Good to have you, my Man, friend. Man, glad to be here. Oh, I'm glad that you're here, and lots of people out there are glad that you're here because over the years, you've dropped by the cabin and taught us some really cool things from your like Jingle Bells arrangement to your Bag of Licks on Banjo <laughs> to your Ray Rhythm runs, and I always get tons of positive feedback on those because you're such a great musician and communicator. So I thought this time, we're going to do more. We're going to do a pro picker case study on Tony Ray. Do you know what that means, Tony? Uh, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> You're about to find out. We're going to do like a 30,000 foot flyover of who you are as a musician. And I want to get your approach and your uh, perspective on playing guitar and banjo, both lead and rhythm which is something that a lot of people have questions about. So we've got tons of content coming your way. I know you're going to love it. If you're watching here as a Gold Pick member on the site, you have access to this entire course, however long it's going to be, including the tabs and the MP3s to uh, an original song that Tony wrote just for this course. Yes, Thank sir. you for doing that. I'm honored that you did that. Uh, if you're watching somewhere else like Facebook or YouTube, you can come on over to the site, BanjoBenClark.com. Join as a Gold Pick member and join us for this entire course. Without further ado, Let's get into it, my friend. Sounds good. Well, dynamics to me um, allows the song to breathe. Okay. You know, it allows you to be out of the way when you need to be, and also convey a point. You know, and it allows you to, um, whenever a singer's singing, to end up with uh, a good in phrase or something to let mm. them know where they are in the song. Mm -hmm. Let you know, and also just you know adds a little little little. Toolbox of licks mm -hmm. and adding just the right amount of this or that in there yeah. to get you through that. So if we were doing that. You have your mandolin. If your mandolin's taking a break, which I feel the mandolin chop really drives, that's your snare drum. You know, that's mm -hmm. a good driving point. So if he's taking a break, then you lose all this momentum. So do does the banjo chop or should you let the fiddle? Myself, I'd rather hear a banjo roll instead of uh, chopping. Yeah, uh, I think it, uh, it it just doesn't lay well for myself. You know, playing in a song. Well, I will just say this, that in your music that you've created is some of the grooviest, we're going to get into that later, but some of the grooviest music that that I've heard. And I think a big part of that is that that banjo is always grooving. It's, it's always rolling. It's always rolling. Mm -hmm. And also, you, if you lock in, you, if you think about it, you're taking a flat pick and you're da 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 da, da and that's what the banjo roll is doing. Just... So if you're picking... You can lock into that roll and lock into that chop and just bring everything together in this nice, neat little package. Yeah. And it allows you to uh, groove. Right in the back of the belly, Tony. 